Good afternoon. On behalf of the uh, Nebraska State Patrol, I'd like to thank uh, everybody here in attendance today for attending today's law enforcement memorial ceremony. I'll start out with reading the uh, proclamation that was issued by Governor Ricketts um, earlier this week uh, regarding uh, National Police Work, uh, Police Week. Whereas Congress and President of the United States have designated the week of May 14th through 20th, 2017 as National Police Week, and the 15th day of May is National Police Officers Memorial Day. And whereas it is important that all Nebraskans understand the problems, duties, and responsibilities of our law enforcement agencies, it is equally important that members of these agencies recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property from violence or disorder, protecting the innocent from deception and the weak from intimidation, and whereas each citizen and organization so should observe this week with appropriate ceremonies commemorating police officers past and present who through faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in so doing have established for themselves an invaluable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens paid for when need be courageously and selflessly with life and limb. Now therefore I, Pete Ricketts, Governor of the State of Nebraska, do hereby proclaim the week of May 14 through 20, 2017 as National Police Week and do specific, specifically designate the 15th day of May 2017 as National Peace Officers Memorial Day in Nebraska and I do hereby urge all citizens to take due note of these observations. In witness where, whereof I have unto set my hand and caused the great seal of Nebraska to be affixed this 15th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2017. Signed, Pete Ricketts, attested by Secretary of State John Gale. Each and every year on average, nearly 150 police officers across our great country pay the ultimate price and make the ultimate sacrifice to keep our communities safe. This week, and in particular this ceremony, is about honoring those officers. The Law Enforcement Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. lists the names of those killed in the line of duty. This wall currently has inscribed on it 20,267 names. Sadly, during 2016, 145 names from 34 different states were added to this wall. Already during 2017, 48 officers from 28 states have made the ultimate sacrifice. All of these officers gave their lives tragically, but did so honoring the oath they took to keep their communities safe. Causes of death include, but are not limited to, illness from the 9-11 attack that took place 16 years ago, gunfire, automobile crashes, assaults, drownings, and being struck by vehicles. Many of these deaths were violent, all tragic, and every one of those killed left behind loved ones. These loved ones understand that the sacrifice their husband, wife, father, father mother, daughter, or son made will never be forgotten. It is our duty to ensure it won't. One of those killed already in 2017 is that of Sergeant Curtis Blackbird, of the Omaha Nation Law Enforcement Service. Sergeant Blackbird died on March 26 when he was involved in an automobile crash in northeast Nebraska near Walt Hill while responding to a call. Sergeant Blackbird was 59 years old. Arthur Ashe was quoted as saying, true heroism is remarkably sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. Our fallen officers, deputies, and troopers were willing to serve others at whatever cost. Their example inspires us during the toughest of times 
and the sa their sacrifice reminds us, us of the true cost of freedom we enjoy. Shortly, we will begin reading the names of our fallen officers. Each of the fallen officers named serve as an inspiration to us all and as a reminder of the sacrifice that those before us made. God bless each and every one here today, the fallen officers we are here paying tribute to, and the families of the officers left behind, whose pain we can never imagine and whose sacrifice we will never take for granted. Loyal M. Zink, badge number 43. Killed on June 13, 1945, in an automobile accident 13 miles west of Sydney. Zink is buried at a cemetery west of Panama. John T. Maestral, badge number 67. Killed on April 10, 1953, in an automobile accident north of Fremont. Maestral is buried at a cemetery located one mile east of Ohio. Vernon C. Rolfs, badge number 129. Killed by gunshot wounds received when he stopped a speeder on May 30, 1953 near North Platte. Rolfs is buried at Prospect Hill Cemetery in Elkhorn. <clears throat> George W. Amos, Jr., Badge 9, killed by a drunk driver on Interstate 80 near Lexington, when the drunk driver disarmed him and shot him with his revolver. April 20th, 1973. Amos is buried at Memorial Cemetery in Fremont. Raymond M. Colber, badge 108. Killed in an automobile accident on September 18, 1961 near Plattsmouth. Colber is buried at a St. Mary Cemetery, north of Nebraska City. Dwayne F. Nichols, badge 133, killed on July 24, 1958, in an automobile accident involving a drunk driver near Waterloo. Nichols is buried at Arnold Cemetery. Marvin L. Hansen, badge 98, Killed by gunshot wounds received when he stopped a stolen vehicle near Valentine on April 8, 1954. Hansen is buried at the cemetery on the east edge of Valentine. Michael D. Farber, badge number 427, killed on August 24th, 1980, when struck by a car driven by a person being pursued by the State Patrol on Interstate 80 near the Hampton Interchange. Farber is buried at Hillcrest Cemetery at the west edge of Decatur. Robert J. Chab, badge number 221, killed on January 6th, 1984, when struck by a car while performing a vehicle check on Highway 159 near Fall City. Chab is buried at the cemetery east of Fall City. Donald Matika, badge number 192, died on December 27, 1989 from cardiac arrest while subduing an individual at a domestic disturbance in Madison County. Matika is buried at Prospect Hill Cemetery, Norfolk. Mark Wagner, badge number 168, died on March 4th, 1999 from an accidental gunshot wound sustained during training exercises at North Platte. Wagner is buried at Floral Lawns Memorial Gardens near North Platte.
On the Law Enforcement Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C., panel 19E, line 25, is the name of Scotts Bluff Police Officer Albert W. Peterson. Officer Pe Peterson made the ultimate sacrifice on April 25, 1923. He was shot and killed while attempting to arrest a, sus a suspect wanted for bootlegging. Um, and while, while I have the opportunity, I'd just like to offer my honor and respect for everyone in public safety. Um, the spirit of the cooperation among pe public safety agencies in our area is, is relatively unheard of. So um, I commend you all for your sacrifices, and I'm honored and proud to be among you. Thank you. James Harvey Ray, a four-year officer of the Gearing Police Department, was killed in an automobile crash involving his patrol vehicle and a semi-truck on August 7, 1959 in the 400 block of M Street in Gearing. He is interred at the West Lawn Cemetery in Gearing. Thank you for this opportunity, Captain. I'd, ask, I'd request that everybody please stand.
Order! At ease. That'll conclude today's law enforcement memorial ceremony. I'd like to sincerely thank everybody for attending and participating in today's event. Um, again, thank you for, for taking the time to honor those who, who have come before us. Thank you. Thank you.